The purpose of this video is to get you started this week on building your models. So we're going to take the first step, which is to choose a cause and an effect to model. So this is just a little bit of guidance about how to get started with that. I'm assuming that you have looked at the video that is called, What is a Cause? So this picture should have some meaning to you. And the thing to remember about a cause in this framework is that we're thinking about a cause at the population level. A cause is not defined for a particular individual in the population. There may be someone in the, in the population who has experienced the cause but does not experience the outcome. And likewise, there may be someone in the population who has not experienced the cause but they experience the outcome. But what we're looking at is at the population level, if we consider that everyone is not exposed, here we have everyone not exposed to cigarette smoke. That was the example we used in the previous video. And here we have everyone exposed to smoking. And the outcome here is lung cancer. And we're saying that we think that if everyone in the population was exposed to smoking, that the lifetime risk of lung cancer would be higher than if everyone in the population was not exposed to smoking. So that's one thing you should remember, what it means for something to be a cause. The other thing is you should have looked at the video which is about how we relate our model to reality. And we saw in that, and we saw this kind of picture, this is showing how we're going to be using data. We're going to be looking for patterns in the data. And, but we're going to be uh, connecting those patterns or interpreting those patterns through our ideas about the causal structure of reality. And so to start out here, we're going to be drawing our ideas about the causal structure of reality. And then later on, we, once we've drawn that, we're going to be going to the data to test whether the data are consistent, whether they're supportive of our causal hypothesis about reality. And so in the first step here, what we're going to do is we're just going to be focusing on this part right here. A is a cause of B. And so what we want to do is we want to choose A, which is our exposure or our cause, and B, which is our outcome. So just a few hints or tips about this. So first of all, we're going to draw it like this. We're going to have a, um, we're going to have one box here. This is going to be our cause. And we're going to draw an arrow here. This means that there's a causal effect on, let's call it the outcome. We could also call, call it the effect. Let's call it cause and outcome. And so we're going to be using either multiple linear or logistic regression to model this cause and effect association. And so one thing we need to think about is there are some constraints on the outcome variable that you should know at this point. So your outcome variable should take one of two forms. Either it should be a binary variable, which means that it's a categorical variable that has two levels. For example, a disease might be a binary variable and because the two possibilities are yes and no, there's two possible outcomes. That's a binary variable, two categories. One category is yes, another category is no. Or your variable should be a continuous measure. And so this is, you know, just a number and it's the kind of thing that you might take an average of. So you should know what a continuous variable is. If you don't, then you can contact me and I'll explain it more. Now, just a little bit about the binary var variable. We, you might find data inside the NHANES that are coded yes or no, but some people will be, um, will give an answer of, I don't know. So it's possible that you can still use that variable, even though it has three levels, yes, no, I don't know. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You could, for example, recode all of the I don't knows to no, so then you um, then you have yes and no. No is not really no. No becomes a kind of a, a mixture of, of no or I don't know, just it's kind of a... a you know, not a definite yes is the category. Um, another way you could do it is you can exclude the people who um, say, 
I don't know, and only use those who either say yes or no, then you only have two levels. You have to begin to worry about um, whether that's going to induce selection bias into your model. Um, we can talk about that more later. But uh, the point here is that uh, even if a variable is not binary in the natural state that you find it, you may be able to make it into a binary variable. Now on the cause side, you don't have the same constraints. So uh, you can have uh, on the cause side, your variable that you choose can be categorical and uh, you know, it can have, it can have two levels which is the same thing as a binary variable, or it can have three levels or even, even more. You're really not constrained there. And it could also be a continuous variable. So really the constraints here are on the outcome side. And there's actually ways that you can model outcomes that have more than two levels, but they're beyond the scope of this course. So we're just going to limit ourselves to these binary or continuous on the outcome side. Don't worry about the cause side. Uh, what you choose is going to be okay. So a couple of other things that I'd like to say about what you choose to model your cause and your outcome. You don't need to make a new discovery here. And if we were doing this in uh, you know, an academic research setting, our aim would be to create some sort of new knowledge about you know, the causes and effects that are functioning in the, in reality. But here we're just learning how to model. So it's fine. And maybe it's even better for you to choose something which is a known cause and effect relationship. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can do what you want, but uh, you shouldn't feel constrained that you have to come up with a new discovery here. Um, we're not planning to publish this. This is just for learning. One thing you might choose is you might choose something for which you have a personal experience or a personal relationship and something that uh, will uh, give your modeling work some sort of uh, emotional pull that will uh, push you to want to look into the data to see if you can find this evidence for a cause and effect relationship. And starting out, you can, you can start out with a kind of vague idea. So for me, I'm going to choose to look at tobacco smoke as my cause. And the reason I want to do that is because I have a personal connection with tobacco smoke in that I can remember my grandfather who was a smoker. In fact, among other jobs, he was a tobacco farmer. I can remember him when I was very young, sitting in his armchair in the living room with an oxygen tank next to him when he had a, a mask on. So what I want to look at then as my effect is something related to the effect of tobacco smoke on the lungs. Now this is very, very vague at this point, but that's okay. I can go to the NHANES data and begin to look at the possibilities for looking at this cause and effect relationship. I can refine this idea and that's fine. So you can choose something like that if you want, something that has a personal connection to you. One thing I should note though is that these data, these NHANES data, are not going to be very suitable for looking at an effect of cancer. The number of people who will have a particular kind of cancer in the data set will be probably too small. And also the long period of time from exposure to an outcome of cancer also makes these, uh, these cross-sectional data not suitable for that kind of model. So I would stay away from cancer as an effect. But otherwise, I would say at this point, don't constrain yourself. Go for what is interesting and compelling to you, and we'll work together to see if we can find an appropriate model for you to work on using the NHANES data.